Covering the High Plains with news, weather, and information. From TV23 Studios in Sublet, this is High Plains Today. Hi, everybody. Welcome to this special edition of High Plains Today. You know what? I am joined today on set, and she looks really, really shiny this morning, Miss Hannah Wagner. She is your reigning Miss Kansas 2015. Thanks for taking the time to come see us today. Thank you. Good morning. You look good today. Oh, well, thank you. You look. She, she, I'm telling you, she's pretty shiny. Okay, so you are the rating, Miss Kansas 2015. You've been doing this about eight months now? Eight months to the day, yep. How's it been so far? Amazing. Amazing. I never thought eight months could be so good, be so tiring, be so long, but be so great at the same time. You've been busy. Yes. Driving Amazing. a lot. Do you a know lot. how many miles you've put on so far? Um, you know, I was thinking about it the other day. In driving, it's over 25,000 some miles. Flying is some other ungodly amount of miles. <laughs> it's just a lot. I think I could have I gone around the globe a couple times. All right, there you go. But unfortunately, you haven't yet. No, I haven't. Okay, all right. Let's go back. Let's start at the beginning, okay? So you're born and raised, Wichita, America, <laughs> you know, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> And you, now what is your pageant experience? Because you went, to, you graduated from Wichita East, high mm -hmm. school East. Mm -hmm. You're a former Blue Ace. That's right. And you did a lot of things while you were at Wichita East. You I did. A, you got a long resume just there. Yeah, you know, along with dancing every day after school, while I was in school, I was doing theater and music and student council and homecoming court and anything. I did it all. You know, but it's good. I like a busy life. I like to be on the go, so it's good for me. All right. So after you got uh, after you graduated from high school, you enrolled at Wichita State. I did. And you are a business major. Yes. Now you're a fr you're a freshman at Wichita mm -hmm. State, correct? Yes. All right. So um, when you get done at Wichita State, what are you looking to do with your business major? That's a good question. Okay. I don't, right. you know, I go into, went into school with my dream job, and someday I'd like to be a CEO. I'd love to do that, but I know that's not really going to happen right off the bat. So as far as the day I graduate, I have no idea what's in store for me. Well, maybe somebody will see this and they'll go, oh, we need her to run our company. That's right. So if you're looking at me now, <laughs> I need a job. <laughs> okay. But... Let's get back to when you were in high school. Now, you've been dance. Dance was your primary talent. Oh, yeah. For Miss Kansas. Yep. Okay. But before you went to the Miss Kansas pageant, you were Miss Augusta? I was. Is that right? Yes. All right. So is that the first time you were ever in a pageant was Miss Augusta? Yes. Yeah. My pageant experience was none before <laughs> I went to Miss Augusta. So I was pleasantly su surprised and fortunate enough to win Miss Augusta, and that sent me on my way to Miss Kansas. And there you were. There I was. And you did, you did, I remember you did Point Ballet mm -hmm. as your talent. Yeah. Swan Lake. Yeah. You had the little feather thing on your head. So they were like earmuffs. They kept me warm backstage. It was so cold back there. I know, but so. for us overweight guys who were moving <laughs> equipment and stuff, it was kind of nice. <laughs> I have extra, I have extra installation, so I needed that air conditioning. <laughs> oh, whatever. <laughs> but you did, and, and when you were at the Miss Kansas pageant, you won two Preliminary awards, right? I did. I did. That was a surprise. I worked hard for swimsuit. It was like a whole couple of months that I had to put a burger on the side and not eat it. So I was really, really excited when I got the swimsuit pre preliminary award, and talent completely surprised me. Really? It really did. I had no idea. I was looking around at all the girls I thought would get it, and then they said my name, and I didn't really believe it at first. So what, what kind of expectations did you go to Pratt with? Um, I don't know if I had expectations. I don't like to lose. Okay, so you're I'm not a sore loser, but that's okay. Right, I'm not a sore loser, but I don't like to lose. So I went there with the intent to win. I didn't expect to win, but I went there to compete to be Miss Kansas. And ta-da. And here I am. <laughs> what did you think when they called your name? When, when Michael Schwanke announced you as the winner as the new Miss Kansas? At first, I was thinking, am I the right Hannah? Because I was one of five in the competition. That's true. There were a lot of Hannahs. I remember that. And then it kind of hit me. They said the last name, and then <laughs> there it was. I was Miss Kansas. I don't really remember what was happening there. It was kind of a big blur. But How long did it take to sink in? 
Um, eight months. It hasn't hit yet. Really? <laughs> it hasn't hit yet. You've been driving around the country <laughs> for eight months and you still don't realize that you're Miss Kansas. I know I'm Miss Kansas, but as far as I'm concerned, I'm still just Hannah. You're just Hannah. And, you know, and, and talking with you yesterday and stuff, that's kind of that's that's kind of cool because you are very down to earth and you're you're very open with people. And Good. I saw you taking a ton of pictures yesterday. Oh yeah. With little kids. I mean, itty bitty kids. They come up, and I think that's the power of the crown, isn't it? Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. It's that crown, the kids have goo and sticky fingers, and they come and <laughs> hug you anyways, and you just, you, there's nothing I can do. I love it. I love every minute, every sticky moment. <laughs> I, remember, I remember there was a little girl that came up, and she was like a foot tall, little blonde girl, and, and she goes, can I have my picture with you? And you said, sure. You didn't even, and you sat down so that you wouldn't be so tall, <laughs> and she stood next to you and, and got a picture. She did. She She's like, can I have your autograph, please? And had me sign my picture in the book. So that makes me happy. It's really humbling to know that that's an experience she'll remember for the rest of her life. Sure. That's a cool deal. Okay. We're going to take a break. And when we come back, we're going to talk more about your experiences in Atlantic City at the big show. Uh-oh. Okay. <laughs> All right. Stick around. I'll be back with Hannah Wagner and more after this. Watching High Plains today on TV23 with host Chris Jewell. TV23's internet service and 4G live streaming provided by United Wireless. Coverage you deserve. Service you expect. United Wireless. And we're back. I am still joined by. The reigning Miss Kansas 2015, Hannah Wagner. All right, now let's talk a little bit about Children's Miracle Network and your trip to Atlantic City. Now, the Children's Miracle Network, now this kind of ties in with the whole Miss America organization, correct? I mean, that is mm -hmm. the charity for the Miss America organization? Yes, each girl has their own individual platform, but the national philanthropy for Miss America is Children's Miracle Network. Okay, so... When you were, let's see, so the Miss Kansas organization, you helped, I think they raised, what, a total of $75,000 for the Children's Miracle Network? Something amazing, yes. Well, yeah, that's nothing to sneeze at. But that's not just you. No. I mean, that's no. all the contestants that's, that were at the Miss Kansas pageant mm -hmm. in that 2015 was everybody. and through June and whatever. Okay. I'd like to take credit for it all, but it's not about me. It's about the kids. <laughs> It's not about me at this point. Did you get a chance to get to any of the Children's Miracle Network hospitals? Ever? I did, yes, a couple of times, uh, right before Christmas. Uh, so there weren't too many people there that tried to send the kids home during Christmas. That's sure. one thing people don't know is they go to the holidays, through the holidays to see these kids, but they try to send them home during the holidays. But I got to see the children that had to be there, and that's so humbling. There's people from ages two days old to 18 years old. Wow, really? And, oh, yeah, it's truly Children's Miracle Network. I mean, it's for anyone who is a child. And I, it was so humbling to go in there knowing all that I have. And I spoke to a mom whose day-old baby, she spent her last $4 on gas to get to that hospital that day. Shut up, really? I'm being wow. serious. Her last $4 to get to that hospital. So I know that the money I'm raising is doing something amazing for these people that could otherwise not care for their children. Wow. And you guys, when you were in Atlantic City... Not just you, but all the other 51 contestants mm -hmm. all did something kind of fun to help with the Miracle Network also, didn't you? Right. We, all our family members and all the Miracle Network kids came through, and we did a huge Miracle Mile. And it's a mile walk on the Atlantic City Boardwalk at, in the evening where the sun's going down over the ocean, and just a walk to remember what we're doing. And who we're serving for, and that this truly is a year of service for other people. I may have the crown, but it's not about me. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's let's talk a little bit about Atlantic City. So you get there what week? Two weeks ahead of time? Two whole weeks. Two whole weeks. Two whole weeks. <laughs> All right. So is it? I mean, what do you do? You hit the ground running as soon as you mm -hmm. land, and you get to wherever, and it's just like zoom, 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 zoom. Yep. You have a time that you should check in, and then from that day on, it's rehearsals, it's dinners, it's meeting sponsors, it's not sleeping, 
it's, <laughs> it's, it's a lot of fun. And two weeks is a long time to be away from home for any reason. But at the end of the day, it was worth it. So do you get to network with, I mean, I'm sure with the other contestants mm -hmm. a lot. Yes. I mean, you guys are together on stage in rehearsals and at dinners and on the bus going to this thing and that thing. Oh, yes. All right. What was the hardest part of the Miss America pageant? Oh, gosh. There was a day when we were, there was a couple days we went to New York City. And I remember going to bed at 1230 at night. And we had to be up at 4.15 the next day to get ready for Good Morning America. That was the worst day of my life when it comes to getting sleep. I was so tired. There's actually a, a photo on social media of me yawning in the background. <laughs> and it's only 10 in the morning. <laughs> well, yeah, but you hadn't had your sleep. I hadn't had my sleep. I hadn't I'm had sure my you coffee. The, I, yeah, Ugh. you're kind of a coffee nerd, I am. Aren't you? I'm a fiend. Coffee fiend. <laughs> All right, what's your favorite kind of coffee? Hazelnut. Hazelnut. Oh, yeah. I like it sweet and creamy with a little hazelnut in there. <laughs> oh, oh, it just warms my heart. <laughs> okay, so anybody out there that wants to buy Hannah coffee, hazelnut, cream, sugar, whatever, you're good to go? Oh, yeah, that's it. That's what I need. All right, <laughs> okay. That gives you that extra. Uh. Mm -hmm. All right, so actually during the pageant, now you're up there, a lot of lights, a lot of cameras, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. I mean, what was the hardest part of the competition itself? Um... Because you it's, go through the interview, right. you have to do the evening gown, you change clothes a hundred mm -hmm. times, you have the swimsuit and fitness. I would say interview. I was the first contestant out of 52. Really? You were number I one? I was number one. And wow. I walked in there and I was all cheerful and they hit me with these terrifying questions. And <laughs> afterwards, it's 10 minutes, it felt like 10,000 minutes. Afterwards, I walked out of that room, and I've never felt so exhausted in my life. Just <laughs> instantly drained. I wanted to cry and sleep all at the same time. So they didn't start out with, uh, hello, Hannah, what is your no. favorite color? You didn't get any of those? No. No, I walked in, and they first asked me about a political question. And I guess it doesn't help the girl who won Miss America was number two. So <laughs> she was right after me. <laughs> so you didn't, get any, you didn't get any fluff questions, huh? I did. I I. They asked me an interesting fact about myself, and without even thinking, I told them that I've never eaten cauliflower. That's true. I read that. Never eaten cauliflower in my life. I don't, I've not just avoided it. I don't know what it is. I've just never had the opportunity to eat it. <laughs> and we talked about that for an embarrassingly long amount of time in my Miss America interview. Okay, so, and I've judged several pageants. And, and to me, the interview for me being a judge, mm -hmm. that's the funnest part for yeah. me. I like that. And... I'm on the other side of it. You go, oh, 10 minutes is up already? Mm -hmm. And you're standing there going, uh, yeah. is this going to be over yet? It's like everlasting. <laughs> <laughs> Hold that everlasting thought, because when we come back, we're going to talk about your platform and how people can get a hold of the Miss Kansas organization to have you make an appearance. All right? Well, good. All right. Stick around. I'll be back with Hannah and more after this. And welcome back. I'm still joined by... Miss Kansas, 2015, Hannah Wagner. All right, young lady. Let's talk about your platform because every Miss has a platform. She does. And yours is the Bold Initiative. Yep. How did you pick the Bold Initiative? Well, I, I'm very passionate about getting what I want. If I want something, you know I'm going to work hard to get it. Well, yeah, you said you, were going, you went to win. You're very competitive. That's right. That's okay. right. And so this is a perfect segue into that. It is. It is. <laughs> How about that? I uh, was put into the business world when I was 17 years old. I put myself there. So, and seeing people not get what they want out of their jobs and just being truly complacent in their, in their positions really kind of was grinded in my gears. You know, I just don't, didn't understand why people wouldn't work for what they want and ask for what they want. So that's why I adopted my platform, the Bold Initiative, because you have to be bold to ask for what you want. Okay, so it's the bold initiative, stand up, stand out, be bold. Yes. And it has like three little things, little bullets on it, right? Right, right. Okay. And those are what, the, the first one is cross-generational mentoring? Yes, yes. Baby boomers still aren't retiring yet, but young, the youngins are trying to get into the I'd workforce. I'd like to. You'd, you'd like to, <laughs> maybe one of these days. But these generations have to work together, you know, 
there, there's so many things you can learn from each other. Those who are seasoned can give their experiences to those who are new and techn technologically advanced. Okay, yeah, there's a lot of difference between the millennials and us baby boomers as to work ethic and how you do things, et cetera, et cetera, and, mm -hmm. so, and all the electronic media and all that kind of right, stuff. Right, right. Okay. So in the second part of it is eight to be great core skills. Mm -hmm. So now are those established core skills that, you know, just pretty much, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight? These are core skills that CEOs from around the world have established as skills they want to see in potential employees and potential uh, CEOs, what a successful businessman should have. These skills are things like discipline, having a good attitude, making the ask, and having a good perspective. Okay. So once you get into that, then you get into the, the eight to be great core skills, and you use those to, to network? Yes. Yes. The true beauty of the BOLD initiative is that it's an initiative to help others find their passion in the workplace. So there'd be networking sessions about a few of the core skills. So one of them is civic and social responsibility. So you go and hear from somebody who is successful in their business, but also gives back to the community and can help you understand why that's important and how you can do the same to be as successful as they are. Okay. So, you, so you're bringing in us old folks to talk to the young folks? Is that how you do that? I don't think you have to be old to be successful now. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, not. But you know what I mean. Yes, now. yes. Okay. Those, you know, it's easy to learn to get success advice from somebody who is successful. And generally that is someone who has been seasoned in their seasoned. work. And their seasoned. their work for <laughs> Thank you. I'm seasoned, maybe. Okay. All right. Well, let's talk about if, if somebody, now I know you've got a couple of appearances today that you're going to go out to local high schools yes. and you're going to talk. Mm -hmm. And if people want to get a hold of the Miss Kansas organization, they can request and you, and, and you will that I show up, right? That's right. I love going out to schools. I love speaking to people, and I have very strong messages about several different things. So if you go to misskansas.org, you can find any information about how to get me to your event, whether it's a dinner, whether it's a school event, business event, a grand opening, whatever it is, Miss Kansas could be there for you. You'll talk to a Rotary Club. You'll talk to anybody, won't I, you? Rotary is what I, I do a lot of Rotary. Do you really? I do. I do. Right. So when you go to, say today, you're going to a couple of schools, what kind of message do you bring to those kids? A lot of times I talk about anti-bullying. Okay. Um, that's, I, I don't put up with bullying. I was bullied, and I want people to know that you can do something. You can be something, and that I'm normal, and I went through the same things they went through, and you can overcome it. And the other thing is that you can be anything you want if you dream big and you work hard to get it. Ties into my platform. Yes. But... You know, I didn't come from much, and I went to Miss America. And if a young girl can see what I've done, hopefully she knows she can do the same thing. Cool. Okay, so when you go to, like, a business or a rotary or something like that, what, what, what do you talk to those guys about? I talk a little bit about my platform, about my community service and how I'm involved in the community. Um, a lot of rotary clubs are very community-oriented, so that's something that kind of ties us together and how we can all give back to our community. Community service, I mean, you've got close to 1,000 hours of community service. I've got over 1,500 hours of community okay, service in I the last it. year. I missed it by 500 hours. It was almost like a part-time <laughs> job, a full-time job there, but I love it. Miss Kansas is a full-time job it this is, year. It is, it is. <laughs> it is so, yeah. So you can go to the misskansas.org to the website, and you can, you can book this young lady, and she'll come, and she'll tell you all kinds of stuff. You know, and I saw you do something the other day at a pageant I was at, and you were helping MC, and you also sang. She didn't dance. She sang. She sings, too. Um, but when it was over, you huddled all the contestants in the center stage before all the pictures started and all the hoopla of the winners and everything, and you talked to them. What were you telling them? It's, it's very hard to stand there and work so hard and at the end of it not hear your name called when you get a crown. And so I just wanted to bring them all together because they worked so hard for this and let them know that, you know, the crown means a lot, but they all deserve that crown and that they have other chances to go to Miss Kansas and they have other opportunities to show who they are 
it's not the end of the world that the pageant was over, that they are all amazing people and that they're doing great things in their community and that's why, they're, that's why they were there in the first place, that even though they didn't win the sash, they still won a place in my heart. You know what, I saw you do that yesterday and that was really impressive to me that you got those girls together just to give them a little pep talk and that, hey, you didn't win, but we're, you, you're gonna be fine. Mm. And I'd never seen anybody do that before and that really impressed me, young lady. Well, thank you. <laughs> so, all right. You know what? I really appreciate you coming and taking the time to come by and see us today. Well, thank you. This is fun. I want to do this fun. again sometime. This is okay. <laughs> Maybe we can sit down and prat and do a, okay, let's see what's happening now that you're going to give up the crown. Oh, I'm not ready. I'm not ready for it. <laughs> well, you got four months yet. Uh, you're right. <laughs> all right. Hannah, thank you very much. And if you want to see this young lady, go to the MissKansas.org website, get on there, Send in a request and have her come talk to you because she is delightful. Anna, thank you. Thank you. You bet. And there she is, Miss Kansas 2015, Anna Webb. Keep up to date with the latest information from TV23 on our Facebook page, KDGL-TV.